Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Who doesn't love a good, well-executed lateral play? Laterals are such a fun part of the game, and though it's extremely rare to see one, when it's done right, it is a thing of beauty. We've seen iconic lateral touchdowns, from the Miami Miracle to the Music City Miracle to the River City Relay, and we're going to see more of these in the future. But there was one lateral touchdown that was highly controversial. It was a play that was blatantly wrong. The referee screwed it up big time. And to make matters worse, this play wound up deciding the entire outcome of the game and may have even played a part in shaping the playoff picture for that season. In a 1977 game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions, a play happened that might earn the distinction of being the most controversial regular season lateral in the history of the NFL. And this is the story behind that play. First, we need some context going into this game. It's October 9th, 1977 and the Detroit Lions are traveling to Minnesota to square off against the Vikings at Metropolitan Stadium. This is a pretty big early season game. Both the Vikings and Lions sit at 2-1, with the winner of this game taking sole possession of first place in the NFC Central. Remember that back then, only four teams made the postseason in each conference, and they only played 14 games, so whoever won this game would receive a massive boost in their playoff chances. And the Minnesota Vikings were led by head coach Bud Grant, who used to coach in the Canadian Football League. He coached 10 seasons with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, winning four Grey Cups and being regarded as one of the greatest coaches in the history of the league. Why do I bring this up? Because in the CFL, Grant was big on having his receivers lateral the ball. He actively encouraged his players on offense and defense, if they had the ball, to look around and see if there were any other players in the area to lateral it to. Grant brought this philosophy over to Minnesota. As Grant said, I've been trying to make my receivers aware of the possibility of working a play like that. Defensive players, especially linemen, do it when they get the ball. But defensive players are extroverts, and offensive players are introverts. Keep that in mind for what you're about to witness in just a few moments. On Minnesota's first drive of the game, they're firing on all cylinders. Fran Tarkenton hits Sammy White on a 12-yard touchdown pass to make it a 7-0 game early on. Then the Vikings force a 3-and-out after sacking Greg Landry on third down. Pretty much a perfect start for Minnesota early on. Two plays later, the Vikings are facing a 2nd and 10 at their own 41-yard line. There have been thousands upon thousands of regular season games played in the history of the NFL, many of which have been lost through history and the passage of time. But of these tens of thousands of games and the hundreds of thousands of plays, what happens next might be the most controversial lateral in the history of the regular season. Roll the tape. Detroit Lions are on a 5 2. They've got Price Hand, English, Orvis, and Sanders up there. As they run five, dropping back is Targeted. And it is complete to right side across the 50 yard line. And he comes Lattle. back. Uh, it's White. White's got the football at the 30, 25, 20. White to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Sammy White. Furboy. Oh, he improvised that one. That wasn't a planned play, ladies and gentlemen. Sammy White goes in on a lateral from Ahmad Bashad for his second touchdown. Now watch this. We got Sammy White lined up in the slot. Parking there. He's five out of six. Comes back, finds his man open. Now this is Rashad on a turn in. Now watch the lateral coming up here. Ooh, that was a quick lateral, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> here we got it again. There's Sammy White. He's on the square out right here. Take it, pal. I don't want it. I'm going out of bounds. Just like that, the Vikings had a 14-0 lead. Five minutes into the game, and everything they touched turned to gold. It's a heck of an IQ play by Ahmad Rashad to pitch it to Sammy White. Turns out, this was a play they had practiced many times before. The most of the time they practiced it, the ball hit the ground, and they wound up fumbling it. As for why Rashad pitched the ball, he said that White told him to do it. As Rashad said, it looked like it would be a low-risk play. It's a play Coach Grant told us to be alert for. Anytime a guy catches the ball near the sidelines, there's relaxation by both teams. And isn't that the truth? Watch on the play how every Lions defender just stops running and just stands there as Rashad is handing the ball to White. They all think the play is over. And to be fair, I think most people watching the game did as well. But that's why you play until the whistle. Except there's one small problem. The whistle absolutely should have been blown here. Look at where White catches the ball. His foot is on the white, well out of bounds. 
You don't even need to blow up the image or examine every blade of grass on the beaten up field at the Met. The vast majority of his foot is standing out of bounds. There was a referee right there, but he just didn't see it. And there was no instant replay back then, as that wouldn't come about until 1986. That meant that the call stood. But the Lions definitely saw it. Head coach Tommy Hudspeth said that on the play, he thought White was out of bounds, and that he was anxious to see the films, which as he later found out, would definitely prove him right. Defensive back Walt Williams said that the play would be proven in the films, and eventual Hall of Fame safety Len Barney said that the team stopped playing because everyone thought he had gone out of bounds. Again, it looked pretty clear that White was out, and this play should have been blown dead at the spot. Cool looking play, but again, not even the slightest bit legal. And to make matters worse, the Lions lost the game by 7 points. The game deciding touchdown turned out to be that play. Obviously, the Lions still had 55 minutes to score and make amends. And obviously, the Vikings could have still scored on the drive if the lateral was blown dead at the spot where White went out of bounds. But the fact that the Lions lost by a touchdown, and the touchdown that they lost on was a play that should not have counted, definitely raised a few eyebrows. And if that wasn't bad enough, this lateral maybe wound up changing the entire playoff picture. Again, playing the game of hypotheticals with a first quarter lateral touchdown is a dangerous game to play, especially since there was plenty of time for the Lions to overcome it, and since the Vikings easily could have scored on the drive without it. But suppose for the sake of argument that the touchdown did not count, got wiped off the board, and everything stayed the same with the Vikings tying it. The Vikings would have finished the season with an 8-5-1 record. In real life, the Vikings won the NFC Central at 9-5, edging out the Chicago Bears for the division title. Under this hypothetical, however, the Bears win it. In fact, the Vikings don't even make the postseason. In 1977, Washington missed out on the wild card with a 9-5 record. If that play is called correctly, and everything else stays the same, the Bears win the division, Washington gets the wild card, and Minnesota is on the outside looking in. As cool as this play was, it seemed blatantly obvious that this should not have counted. Add in the fact that it decided the game and may have wound up deciding the entire playoff picture? Well, you've got the ingredients for the most controversial regular season lateral in the over century long history of the National Football League. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarrogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.